Exactly. And I think, like we said, it goes beyond just a lot of vendors are claiming biometrics, but they don't have the patents, the algorithm, or the technology to really do it in a very secure way, which is critical when you're looking at biometrics uh, one for one. Um, okay, Greg, so then going back into um, the next kind of piece of this, we're back into Portal Guard, into the account management page. Let's talk about uh, single sign-on, right? We talked about multi-factor authentication, self-service password reset. Um, but let's talk a little bit about single sign-on, the jump page, um, and then overall capabilities. I'll also uh, put this in there so you can touch upon it that um, there, uh, we also have another question from the audience about integrating with AD um, and whether or not they need AD anymore. So if you can kind of lump that in. I know we talk about directories at this point as well, so that'd be great. Okay, yeah, so uh, I guess we can answer the question about the directory first. So uh, Portal Guard for years has supported multiple directories, um, and this was even back in the on-prem version, we could support Active Directory, which is by far the most common you know, real-time directory. Uh, we, we actually use LDAP to communicate with it, so L any LDAP v3 uh, compatible server is also in play. So that could be something like Open LDAP, it could be something like even Domino, uh, IBM Domino as an LDAP server as well. So we have customers using those. Uh, we actually also support for a long time SQL based directories. And so, you know, that could be the username, password, hash, and salt uh, being stored in a, a database table that Portal Guard can access at runtime. Um, and so just recently in Portal Guard 6.5, uh, we've added the support for Azure Active Directory as a real-time directory. And so what that means is that instead of Portal Guard looking at a SQL-based directory or looking at Active Directory, it can actually use a you know Portal Guard IDAS when coupled with Azure AD becomes a fully cloud-based authentication uh, you know process where you know it does it. You don't have to worry about running any of that infrastructure anymore. Uh, and there's different ways of getting your data up into Azure AD. Some more, you know, smaller customers may um, not even have an on-prem AD domain controller anymore, and they just have direct accounts directly in Azure AD. Uh, there's also Azure AD Connect, you know, which is something that a lot of people have used, you know, in, with Office 365. A lot, of, I'm sure everyone's pretty comfortable with that. But that's a way to replicate the local Active Directory up to Azure AD. Uh, but so in that case, when you know a user's logging in and it's checking a name and a password. Portal Guard, whether it is IDAS, whether it's the on-prem version, can authenticate, you know, reach out to Azure AD in real time, which should always be up. If Azure AD ever goes down, then I guess I may as well just quit and become a potato farmer. <laughs> and bigger um, problem. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So in that case, you know, that authentication is occurring there. We're pulling identity claims or values from Azure AD to use in the, you know, for SSO. Um, yeah, and so, you know, completely cloud-based, um, you know, very redundant and super resilient. So it's something that we're really excited about, um, you know, it, and there's definitely no shortage of our customers that are interested in that. Um, so yeah, that's on the you know the directory side, and so Portal Guard for we've been doing single sign-on uh, for longer than some of our competitors even been around. So we started it in 2012 was when we added support for SAML. So that is you know we try to use a identity federation uh, approach. So all these standard protocols that work in any browser, you know, regardless of operating system, that work, um, you know regardless of the environment, whether the application's in the cloud or it's on-prem or somewhere in between, uh, things like SAML, uh, WS Federation, uh, OAuth, OpenID Connect are more modern SSO protocols that we support. CAS is one that uh, CAS is very specific to higher education that we've supported for years. And so, you know, by Portal Guard relying and being able to speak all these different languages, all these different SSO protocols, uh, it allows us to support tens of thousands of applications. There's applications that haven't even been written yet that if you implement the protocol the right way, then all it is is some configuration on each side and it just works, right? So for example, G Suite uses, uh, uses SAML. Um, Office 365 is an example, one of the few still, that uses WS Federation. Um, so there's there's a, like no shortage again of applications that are supported when you use this method. And with these SSO protocols, the other great thing is there's no passwords to sync. You know, some of them support on the fly uh, provisioning or just in time provisioning where all the different identity data that Portal Guard has about the user and can be configured to send uh, to the downstream application 
uh, can be used to you know provision accounts in that application you know on the fly. Uh, and so you know again these are things that are well well established. They've been around you know and they've seen the the best and brightest people have looked at and worked on these specifications. Um, you know so it's it's definitely something that has made things very easy for us and our customers. Um, so yeah, in this case, it's uh, you know SSO is such a big win from that uh, you know convenience standpoint for end users. It increases user adoption. You know they're trying to get into applications. They don't want to be stuck doing authentication or worrying about what their password was or that the password expired. So you know being able to have so many different apps behind a single login uh, interface. I'm sure a lot of people are very comfortable with that idea now. Um, you know and so being able to enforce different things for different users, whether it's like step up authentication is something that we have coupled with our SSO, where maybe getting into email is a single factor, requires a single factor, but maybe getting into a specific application like HR, like an HR app or PeopleSoft, for example, might require a full multi-factor. And so Portal Guard can know that and say, wait a second, you're trying to get into this app, you haven't done, satisfied those criteria, and it will prompt them and then get them in. And again, all that's logged and audited. No, that's great. And I think that's that's one of the really key differentiators too, is being able to support beyond um, just the cloud-based applications, right? So we talked a lot about web SSO. We've talked a lot about these applications. Some are, are really familiar, um, but let's